This week on the show, we are talking about the new moon eclipse in the sign of Libra. And Libra, as you might know, is the sign of relationships and actually riches. So I decided since relationships are so highlighted this week, it would be a really good idea to talk to someone who specializes in relationships. So this week we have a relationship astrologer who's going to help us decode the meaning of the astrology of the week ahead, the moonology of the week ahead, and how to get the best out of it for all your most important one-to-one relationships. We're also talking about what you need to know about the astrology of your chart with your partner or potential new partner. And we're taking a card for what you need to know about getting through this new moon eclipse week. So let's go. So this week, I am extremely excited to welcome to the show someone that I actually saw online and basically tracked down. Uh, Her name is Elena Sotolano, and uh, although she sounds Italian, she actually lives in Sydney, Australia. And uh, Elena is actually focused on relationship astrology. And uh, as the French would say, ça tombe bien, that's what they say. It means that that works out very well. That's perfect. Because guess what? This week brings the new moon eclipse in the sign of Libra, which is very much the relationship sign. So before I bring Eleanor on, let me just tell you a little bit about her. She's a professional astrologer based in Sydney. I've just established she's in the inner west and she services clients from all over the world. She is certified by the Federation of Astrologers Australia and she embraces both a model, a modern and traditional approach to astrology, having studied both evolutionary astrology with the Sydney Astrology School and horary astrology with the School of Traditional Astrology. Now, horary astrology is a whole thing in itself, which we can uh, <laughs> talk about another time. But welcome to the show, Eleanor. Lovely to have you here. Oh, thank you so much, Yasmin. Gosh, I'm a huge fan, huge, huge fan. Oh, um, that's so nice of you. That's really lovely. Thank you. Thank you. So, Eleanor, honest. let's just, what we do on the show normally is we talk about the astrology for the week ahead, the moonology for the week ahead, which in this case is going to be all about the new moon eclipse. Uh, then we do a card, which we've said you're going to pick a card because actually you've got my deck there and I don't have my deck here right now. So, yeah, you're <laughs> going to do a card. For anyone who's listening and then we'll do a reader question which I think will make about uh, relationship astrology um, because that's your special subject so let's just dive straight into the astrology for the week ahead what's in the stars this episode will come out on Sunday the 29th of September And then actually, we will already be feeling the Monday uh, Mars trine to Saturn. So what springs to mind for you when you hear Mars trine Saturn uh, on a Monday? I mean, to me, that's actually quite quite a nice placement. How can people use it? Oh, gosh, isn't that all about goal setting, isn't it? Yeah. (laughs) For for a Monday, it's, it's really, Saturn's really about wanting you to get serious. I always have a serious word when I when I see Saturn. And when I see Mars, I always see, I don't know why, I always see the turbo blast of a, you know, the the, the turbo in, in a car. It's, it, yeah, it's me just too. A, I see the engine. Oh, right. It, it's it's just that little turbo boost that that the car needs to to trigger things yeah. into action. So yeah, I, so I, I mean, I think we can probably yeah. say at the start of the week with Mars, like the engine of the Zodiac, I always say. So like I always say without Mars, you know, if the Zodiac was a car, Mars is the engine. So if Mars isn't working, the car's going nowhere. But in this case, right. Mars is working and it's making a harmonious aspect to Saturn, which, as you say, you know, totally gold really good day you know maybe sunday night maybe monday morning depending on how you're feeling Mm. make a list of your your to-do list for maybe you know instead of just the coming week given that it's the very end of september you maybe want to make a list of um to-do stuff for october 
over here in my life, we've been learning a lot about intention. And uh, I've been trying to teach my son, Louis, who's 17, about intention. And he actually had a big win with intention uh, last night. And uh, and I, I actually had a big win with intention yesterday. So when I was running late for something and I remembered my first uh, meditation teacher telling me intention also includes destination. And long story short, intention's, you know, super powerful. And we've been playing with it a bit this week. And so it is with Saturn. Saturn's very much about intention, isn't it? It's about saying, right, these are my goals. These are the steps I have to take. It's not necessarily glamorous. It's not necessarily, mm. you know, you know, fireworks. But it's this is what I need to do to get where I want to go. What do you mm -hmm. reckon? And I think it's uh, Saturn always likes to work step by step, like, like yeah. building a house, you, you know, about making sure that the foundation is right and then just building brick by brick. That's what I also see when I see Saturn. So it's about yeah. just taking that first step. Yeah, and I think also, you know, it is going to be a nice grounding energy because Saturn's very grounding. And, you know, given that we are now between the eclipses, we've just had the full moon eclipse and then this week we're going to get the new moon eclipse, which we will talk about together. You know, for me, it's like a lot of people might be feeling a bit discombobulated at the moment because, you know, eclipse season is very much a time of change. It's a time when things are shifting. And so, you know, actually the week starting off with this Mars-Saturn alignment to me can also be grounding. Would you agree with that, Eleanor? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. It's about the, the foundation, isn't it? Just and, and taking things slowly, slowly but surely. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And another phrase that I love for Mars Saturn is the idea of channeling your energy wisely because Mars is all about energy and Saturn is about wisdom. So it's a bit like, you know, um, to quote the American astrologer Michael Luton, for anyone out there who knows his work, um, you know, if you're banging your head against a brick wall, buy a helmet, or I would say, if you're banging your head against a brick wall, stop. Because, you know, this is about Mars, as we said, is drive, it's determination, it's where you want to, you know, push yourself. And Saturn is wisdom and longevity and, um, you know, mm. very much being level-headed. So it's like use your energy really wisely as the week opens. And it also means that, the you know, the energies as this week begins are going to be, you know, relatively friendly, we could say, which is a really good thing, isn't it? Because we're in this eclipse season. And so, you know, anything that's going to keep us stable is a good thing. Do we agree? Right, right, right. Because of the trying aspect that Mars and, and Saturn are making. So, yes, yeah, exactly. exactly. They're, in a, they're in a very harmonious trine mm. aspect, which is, you know, represents free flowing and so on. So I think the first takeaway for everybody listening is then use the start of the week to get serious, Saturn word, about where you want to push forward kind of Mars energy, as, not just for the day, not just for the week, for the, for the month of October. Okay, and what about then we've got on the same day, actually, we have the sun meeting Mercury, the sun and Mercury in the same point in the skies. Now, we should mention this is post the recent retrograde. So, you know, in my podcast last week with Cass, um, I, I talked uh, with Cassandra Tyndall, I talked about, uh, we talked about the, the post Mercury retrograde clear up, which is what Cass really saw it all as. And I suppose now it's like we get this, you know, this new conjunction. So what do you make of that, Eleanor? Because it's direct, I think that's all action go, really. Um, Mercury in in Libra conjunct the sun there. It's really now wanting to, to take action in, in how we need to speak up and uh, communicate. As a relationship astrologer, how do you view this Sun-Mercury conjunction in Libra? What's a good way for people to look at that, especially <laughs> if they're going through a tough time in their relationship or maybe they're single? How would you look at that? Well, gosh, <laughs> I mean, um, ideally, I suppose it'd be about being honest in your relationships and, and actually speaking up and asking what you want in a relationship it's it's yeah it's also I suppose Libra it does bring an energy about well unconsciously I suppose it's about uh, people pleasing so it's sort of like saying 
there's no more time to do that now. So um, it, it's perhaps high, highlighting because the sun is supposed, maybe the sun might actually highlight how we are communicating in, if you are doing it unconsciously, then are you doing it in an unconscious way, in an unconscious Libra way, would we'll definitely be wanting to be, to be overly codependent. So it's highlighting that and, and wanting change. Yeah, yeah. And I also think as well, you know, for one thing, um, you know, as we said, the sun is like a spotlight, isn't it? Mercury is the planet of communication. So when they get together post the retrograde, it is going to, you know, maybe shine a light on the things that did come up in the retrograde, but it also just shines a plain old light on the uh on the the importance of communication and you know i'm sure as an astrologer who deals with relationships you would agree that the most important thing in any relationship is always going to be communication keeping the lines of communication open and so for me as we head towards that new moon eclipse in the sign of romance relationships libra maybe it's going to be then at the start sunday the weekend sunday monday tuesday really good time to make sure you are communicating well and it doesn't just have to be a community uh, your current partner it could be your ex could be just someone who's a really important person in your life and really thinking do i have the lines of communication open and being aware that if your relationship feels at all troubled at the moment then that sun mercury conjunction is then going to be a really good like opportunity to um have have a conversation that maybe is going to help shore things up because then we're going to get the new moon eclipse in libra quite quickly which we'll talk about when we get to the moonology and that can be quite jarring. That can be quite electric. Eclipse is a kind of wild card. So there's no telling what's going to happen in relationships right now. Mm. And I think for that reason, it's really good to uh, be having those important conversations. What do you reckon? Totally. I mean, I, I do notice that there's this upcoming new moon. So Eclipse does have um, the South Node conjunct the Sun. It's almost like the Sun is in, is wedged in between Mercury and and the sun at six degrees. So does that suggest that there's something that needs to be let go of in terms of how one is communicating perhaps? And so if, if someone is being that people pleaser, it's highlighting that and perhaps forcing uh, that to be let go, you know, in a way. Would, would you... Yeah, I mean, I agree. Let's keep that for talk, the talk when we get to the new moon, because I I just want to do the astrology first, but let's come back to that for sure once we've uh, finished off the astrology. So let's finish off by the talking about astrology by mentioning that on October 4, which is going to be Friday, uh, Mm -hmm. so that will actually be in the wee small hours of October 5 in Australia, um, what do you have to say as uh, about the Venus Saturn trine? Given that we are uh, in this eclipse week and Libra is so highlighted, and Venus is obviously one of the um, is the planet that rules Libra, and also about relationships. And we've already talked about Saturn being about you know steadiness and longevity. What do you make of that October four slash five Venus uh, Saturn trine? And, and is Venus going to be in Scorpio? It's it's so uncanny that we're actually talking like delving right in into relationships. So it's going to go really deep. It's wanting us to very much look into how what we value. I I think I think Venus is all about highlighting what we what we value and and um, how we love and it it will be like really diving deeply. And when it's trining that. I suppose, yeah, it's it's about seriously looking at our values and and what we value in a relationship, and and perhaps <laughs> if it's something that we might not uh, align with, maybe that is something that we might have to question, re-question um, about uh, you know the, the the values that we want to continue on in in this new moon phase. So yeah, yeah. Be, um... Yeah. And I and I think as well, you know, again, we haven't talked about the eclipse really yet, but you know, it comes just after the eclipse. And the eclipse, you know, is a bit discombobulating, probably will be quite discombobulating. The image I'm getting as we talk is I'm imagining someone on a trampoline, you know, and just like bouncing off the trampoline. Like to me, eclipses can be a bit like that. You don't quite know where you're going to end up, how it's going to 
excuse me, how it's going to play out, stuff like that. But again, as we said, you know, Saturn is that very solid, steady, stable energy. So even if the eclipse is a bit discombobulating, having this Venus Saturn link straight after it, to me, is a very positive thing. And it means that by the time we get towards the end of the week, even if it has been a bit like being on a trampoline and you're a bit not really sure which way is up, there sh it should start to feel a bit steadier. What do you reckon? Mm, 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 mm. So Saturn is, is, is about finding our steps and in really understanding what our, our true values are and commitment. I see commitment is a yes, big... very, yes, very true. I... Very Saturn, Venus Saturn is very yeah. much about commitment. So, I mean, when you see that as a relationship astrologer, we've gone from the new moon eclipse in Libra to this very much a signature for commitment. How does that play out in your, in your world? So it will definitely be highlighting relationships that have no commitment. <laughs> that uh, rings a bell about um, the, the term situationships. Perhaps it might <laughs> bring up, you know, those relationships that aren't based on a, a on a on a solid foundation, on a solid Saturn foundation. So maybe yeah, it might bring up that perhaps. Look, I think it, it, commitment would it will be definitely be highlighting if you don't have it in your relationship. And also a good time to try and bring a bit more commitment into your relationship if that's something you're after. I mean. You know, if you survive the eclipse, Saturn, Venus, Saturn is a great time to sort of try and steady the boat and get things on a bit more of an even keel. Yeah. Mm. yeah okay. Mm. Amazing. Well, thank you, Eleanor. All right. Thanks. So now let's take a look at the moonology for the week ahead. Where's the moon? Eleanor, you are the relationship astrologer. Let us hear about your thoughts about the new moon eclipse in Libra. Okay, so <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's just you know I I don't believe in um, mistakes. I, I always believe that uh, things happen for a reason, and it, it's just so amazing how you know I, I'm I'm doing this at this at this time because um, of course in in, in such a, a relationship sign um, Libra. So it, look, I do see that this is obviously part of the lunar eclipse that we just had, the full moon lunar eclipse that was in Pisces, conjunct Neptune, its ruler. Goodness, I, I really, that honestly for me, that was a life-changing uh, experience for me. Really, the energy that I felt because of the Neptune that really I think just made it even stronger, it was almost like being in a washing machine. <laughs> you know, on full blast spin cycle and really forcing me to to let go. That energy was all about letting go and, and then coming to this and, and highlighting what we need to let go and then coming to this new moon cycle, uh, which is still, though, even though it's a new beginning, it still is conjunct the south node. So I think it's it's, it's just highlighting that there's something that needs to be let go that we've perhaps uh, realised from the, uh, the 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 full moon. Is, is, is would you? Yep. Yeah. I would, <laughs> would argue. You? I would argue. So no? it's actually <laughs> taking place on the other side of the south node. So I would argue that oh, okay. you know it's a separating aspect. So I think, I mean, for my money, you know, everybody will have their own opinion and people will have their own experience. But I think for me, I see this as an eclipse that's taking place after uh, the letting go. And now it's a new start about, okay, you know, where are we now? Eclipses to me, they're always a new, a huge changing of gears by the universe and really very much a chance to start all over again. And for me as well, again, you know, just, just my humble opinion, uh, although it is also strict astrology, just for anyone who's thinking I'm just making it up as I go along. <laughs> Actually, the new moon is taking place conjunct Mercury. Now, as we've said, Mercury is the planet of communications. So again, I think this eclipse is going to be, you know, if you want to use it to the best of the way you can, you know, I would say sit down at the time of the eclipse and um, sit down at the time of the eclipse and really think about 
how can I improve my communication with the people who matter the most to me? Because mm -hmm. uh, New Moon Eclipse in Libra, all about relationships, conjunct Mercury, very much about um, communications. And, you know, communications will change everything in relationships. So think about how you're communicating. If you're with someone and you've been going through a rough time, maybe you've got into a bad communication cycle. You know, mm -hmm. and if you're single and you're wanting to find someone, maybe it's time to, you know, change your mindset. Maybe you've been walking around going, oh, there are no good men left, you know, and then what are you going to manifest? No good men. So for me, yeah. it's going to be all about that. I, I will say, you know, one thing that's really important to do, you know, if you're listening to this before October the second slash third. So it's October the second in the UK and the USA, in Australia and New Zealand, down under it's October the third. It's really time to sort of let go of any negativity. You know, if you've been, you know, writing a diary, say, because that's very mercury to write a diary, very much time to just burn the diary, say, I'm just leaving all that stuff behind and I'm going into my relationships in a new way. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What else do you think about it, Eleanor? So the way that we, we talk, but also the, I suppose the way that we behave as well um, in terms of our beliefs and, and, and how we think, because I think Mercury is, is also about our thoughts, right? And our thoughts are just, you know, they, they could be, and those repeated thoughts can be uh, based on our beliefs. That, and then the beliefs, I, I, I believe, they manifest as behaviours in, in our lives. And so even to, like for me, for example, I, I, I've had to, because that full moon in Pisces was in my, I mean, it's always good to know where the moon as a torchlight is, is highlighting which house. Uh, and, and for me, it was in my ninth house. So it was really about letting go of beliefs that are, are not, you know, that I'm just sick of, it's almost like, you know, a, a broken record play, I really highlighted that I, I really need to let go, especially of the belief of living in lack and survival. So I just, perhaps, it, yeah, it might be bringing up ways that we actually speak to ourselves. That's huge. And, and I mean, self-talk is so important. Yeah, I think it would include that as well. So not only, you know, who we speak to, I mean, and, and I suppose our partners and, and anyone around us, even people that we meet on the bus you know they can they can be really important too they can be mirrors and, and highlight our beliefs perhaps that we should be letting go of so yeah, yeah and so also I think you know highlighting like you say what stories are you telling yourself about yes. your relationships what stories are you telling yourself about you know what really matters to you because mercury is talk but it's also self-talk you know, and also yeah. the other thing that's happening, which is really nice, um, is not only at the new moon in Libra do we have this uh, um, conjunction to Mercury making it a really good time to start all over again in any relationships, improve your communication skills, and we have that lovely Venus-Saturn trine, which is going to make things feel steadier, even though there is a bit of upheaval inherent in any eclipse. But they're sort mm -hmm. of like, you know, if you can if you can navigate it, if you can get through it, you're going to find yourself on much more solid ground. The other thing that's happening, which is so lovely at the time of the eclipse, is that um, Jupiter is coming in to a sextile with Chiron. So Jupiter is obviously the planet of positivity and optimism and all good things. And Chiron is the healing planetoid. So, you know, it's really we're talking about healing hearts, you know. So if you've been through the mill, hopefully what you did at the full moon eclipse was you let go of all your upsets and all your dramas and all the difficulties. And now as we move into the new moon eclipse, the start of a new cycle, it's the last eclipse of 2024. We won't get another one until next year. And there's this healing energy around as well. So if you know you have some healing that you need to do, uh, really, really good time to be doing it. Like we traditionally do the forgiveness at full moon in, moon in moonology but with this new moon we set intentions and I'll be doing a Facebook ceremony for anybody who wants to come and join me just go to moonmessages.com forward slash fb events for Facebook events moonmessages.com forward slash fb events we can put a link in the description but it's very much a time to think how can I have a healing conversation 
in one of my most important one-to-one relationships. I mean, in a way, to me, that almost sums it up. How do I have a more healing conversation in one of my most important relationships to make everything more secure and stable again? That, to me, I think sums up the astrology of this eclipse. What do you reckon, Eleanor? Mm -hmm. When you say healing, does that, because Chiron going to be in, is it uh, Aries? Do you mean like Chiron as healing its sense of um, will be actually coming to terms with having a sense of self and, and realizing that, you know, we are worthy and so that we can speak up in a relationship. You know, it's not about dimming your light and hiding your light and having to people please and so just being a bit more courageous, I think, with the Mars also giving us that courage because Mars can be also about courage to actually um, make us stand on our own two feet. Is that what you mean by healing? Yeah. Well, for me, you know, Chiron, yes, Chiron is in Aries for sure. Um, And, you know, it can be about healing yourself because Aries is very much about the self. And then once you heal yourself, you are able to take the healing into your relationship. So, you know, I mean, it could be, like we said before, it doesn't have to be a relationship with your partner. It doesn't even have to be a relationship with your ex. It could be a relationship with your mum or your dad or your sibling, you know. But Chiron is very much the planetoid that pushes us to uh towards healing and uh you know it can be it can be a difficult um energy but because it's making uh, a harmonious aspect to jupiter i think Mm. we can definitely say there's a lot of positive healing to be done on the self and then when you heal yourself you start to heal your relationships would you agree with that Mm. Mm. and then that brings self-worth doesn't it into into a relationship yes yes exactly exactly all right okay well i think that kind of sums it up uh why don't we now um have you take an oracle card for anyone who's listening who wants some relationship advice or what do they need to know about their most important one-to-one relationships a message from the moonology oracle this is my first oracle deck that i bought by the way and i i use it religiously at every full full and new moon so excellent (laughs) thank you yes ellen has got my moonology oracle deck there yes there it is all right let's have a card what have you got oh wow okay it's it's the north node which is interesting and it says step out of your comfort zone which is exactly what i'm doing now yes (laughs) Brilliant. So how would you interpret that in terms of a new moon eclipse in Libra as a relationship astrologer? What what are you what's it saying to people? Gosh, to to just to, to just go for it. If if you're you know, to really have that courage to, to speak up, like if, if perhaps yeah, don't like have a coffee with, with that that person. <laughs> <laughs> that you've been meaning to say something, say something to. Take the courage to have that that chat. Yeah. And what about if you're already in a relationship? Like to me, the North Node is all about, like, like the card says, pushing out of your comfort zone. So we've seen that the eclipse is taking place right after the South Node, like it's just on the other side of the South Node. By the way, the nodes are imaginary points in the sky. They're not actually physical things. They're actually the intersection of the moon around the Earth as the Earth moves around the sun. And the South Node is very much about where you've been, which is why I said this eclipse being on the other side of the South Node for me is about pushing forward, um, especially in relationships. And in some ways we could say relationships are probably the most important thing that we actually deal with here on planet Earth is our relationships with people. Um, yeah. And I think be, you know getting the North Node card there is so interesting as well because it's almost like another affirmation of it's really time to leave the past behind and to think mm, about yeah. you know yeah. what's the thing you need to do and maybe it's a bit scary. Maybe mm-hmm. it is a bit nerve-wracking. Maybe you do have to push out of your comfort zone. And like you said, you know, maybe you do call that person and go and have a coffee with them. Or, you know, if in your relationship, um, your existing relationship, maybe you might go, you know what, we need to do things differently. So the North Node is all about doing that thing that you kind of know that you need to do that you've slightly been putting off because it's a little bit scary. But probably once you'll do it, you'll go, 
why didn't I do this five years ago? Exactly. And, and, and yeah, it, it's uncharted territory. It's it's definitely something that we're, we're, we're not familiar with, is it? So there's always going to be that fear, initial yeah. fear. We just yeah. have just to embrace that fear and, and just do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, and everything you want lies on the other side of it. That is so true. So mm. true. What's that famous quote? Like, where you don't want to look is where you should look, you know? Right, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Or maybe where you don't want to go is where you should go. I mean, I'm not sure that's actually true. <laughs> but, you know, you get the you get the idea. Amazing. Okay. Well, thank you for that card, um, Eleanor. All right. So now let's finish off by talking about the, uh, by doing a reader question. Your questions answered. So what I thought I would do, since you are the relationship astrologer, and we'll get all your details about that before we finish, but I was going to say, you know, what are the top things you'd like to say about the astrology of relationships? Because people listening, a lot of people will be single, they might be having a problem with their relationship this week, especially with the new moon eclipse, or they might be um, coupled and, you know, with its own issues. What do you? What are the top three things that you think people need to know about relationships um, when it comes to relationships and astrology? Oh gosh, what a <laughs> what a great question! Um, and especially with with the energies that we're in now in this um, eclipse portal, that is uh, really forcing us to put yeah relationships on the on in on the front row seat. Um, I I mean there is also about I think number one is about going with the flow in terms of look these energies you know. Obviously, because we're astrologers, I suppose we're more connected in a way with, with, with the energies and we, we understand, you know, what's coming in. But um, perhaps people who are not so much connected with, with the energies that, that are coming in can be a bit confusing. But I, I would just say the energies, just let them wash over you. It's almost like I'm still getting that image of that being in, in in a washing machine <laughs> during this portal time so I think it's just about going with the, the the spin cycle like you know just letting it uh go that would be the my first piece of advice and, and um, one thing I'd love to ask you I, I love that what you just said but I'd, one, I'd love to ask you if someone's thinking okay is this person compatible with me what's the first thing that they should be looking for in their chart let's do that one oh <laughs> <laughs> would, would, <laughs> would you well there's a number of things I suppose to look at you know I, mean, I suppose you could look at uh your the descendant and, and and Venus and and you know someone's Venus how they uh are compatible with your Venus and 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 Mars the personal planets and, and even Mercury as well I mean usually when I find um when there's a, a harmonious relationships I find a lot of harmonious aspects between the personal planets uh, and especially also the uh, the primal triad. So when there's a lot of beautiful harmonious sex dolls and, and uh, trines and, and conjunctions between, you know, the ascendant and the sun or the sun and the moon, I do see that, yeah. That, but then again, I do often see, even in very long-term relationships, I, I do see some very strong challenging aspects. And I think, oh, God, you know, that's really odd when the moon is when the moon is screwing the moon. You'd think, oh, how can they be working together because they both would get nourished in a different way. And but you'd, I think a relationship does need some grit because squares, I think, are the things that help uh, make us act. You know, it's about um, act taking action, and I think because all relationships at the end of the day are to help us evolve, uh, yeah, basically. Yeah. And just to sort of spell it out for people who are new to all this, you know, in terms of what um, Ellen is saying about uh, compatibility between your, you know, your sun, Mercury, Venus and their sun, Mercury, Venus, for example, basically in a nutshell, fire and air go well together, excuse me, and earth and water go well together. So if you've got, you know, if you've got sun in Aries and they've got Venus in Sagittarius, there's got to be a bit of connection there, a bit of complicity. 
And uh, there are some signs which really don't particularly understand each other very well. They tend to be the signs that are about either six or eight signs apart. You can just count them around the chart. And yeah, and if they are in, so um, like I said, air and fire and water and earth compatibilities. Eleanor, where can people find you? And do you do relationship readings? Is that what you do the whole time? Yes, 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 definitely. Um, but I do, for relationship um, readings, I do stress that uh, the natal charts need to be done before. Um, you know, each individual's chart needs to be looked at um, individually first before I can actually do a, uh, a relationship chart together. It just, it, I don't know, it just gives a more in-depth reading um because you know at the end of the day as you say it's, it's it's really about healing one's sense of self really uh because we really need to understand who we really are um and yes of course relationships will help us do that uh will help us put that mirror in front of our faces to to yeah, see exactly who we are <laughs> sure do. so where do people find you online is it on instagram ah. Yes, Instagram at the moment. Yep. So, um, and that's just the the, the tag at uh, the uh, the relationship astrologer. So, yeah. So that's that's where you can uh, contact amazing. me. Amazing. Well, I think we wish everybody out there an amazing new moon in Libra eclipse week. It is a huge <laughs> week for relationships. So, you know, if you're out there and you're thinking, what am I going to do? Let's just summarize it again. Allow the past to fall away, allow for a new start in relationships, focus on communications and aim to move towards stability. Perfect. <laughs> the energies are there and it can be healing. All right, Eleanor Sotolano, thank you so much for being here and uh, we wish you as well a very, very happy new moon eclipse. Oh, to you too. It's been an honour. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Eleanor. <laughs>